Well, let me talk about what is the vision and national service. I think it is not, it does not begin or should not begin at the high school level. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to go to the primary school level. Leveraging and launching our creative industries in That's the country. That's mixed reviews. Well, I think, I think what got <laughs> mixed reviews is not the, con the concept, but the labeling. What we do today will affect those coming after us. Eight bodies wash ashore in Grand Bahama. The Prime Minister says he intervened in Clifton Row. The Commissioner explains why not all crimes are reported and we'll show you the island's best kept yard. We'll tell you how they did it. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Nakia DeVoe and this is NB12. Cable 12 Studios. Some sad news tonight. Residents in West Grand Bahama making a tragic discovery this morning. Several bodies washed ashore near Holmes Rock. One of them was that of a child. Several agencies have joined together to search for additional bodies or survivors. One after the other, bodies were carried from the beach in bags as investigators searched for any evidence to tell them how long they were there or who the unidentified people are. A local beachgoer made the discovery around 8 this morning. Initially there were six. Uh, we have a present count now of eight bodies. We have six males and two females. Um, one child, one male child that has been discovered around the age of 8 to 10 years. Uh, very tragic. Based on preliminary investigations, officials believe that they're Haitian nationals. Public Relations Officer Origin Delavo says a wooden vessel was discovered during the initial search. However, officers do not know where the boat was coming from or where it was headed. The vessel is not too far from the shore. It's partly submerged. Um, uh, we can't say for sure what happened. Um, but as we investigate further, we'll be able to report on it further as to what might have happened to cause the particular incident. Um, where it come from, we, we're not certain as yet. The United States Coast Guard is assisting police and defense force officers with search efforts. Aerial searches began almost immediately following the discovery. Delavo says the team will continue to conduct ground and aerial searches for additional bodies or possible survivors until the team is satisfied that there is no one else. We must do our part to ensure that we leave no stone unturned in this particular incident um, and, and search as best as we can. At this present time we have divers um, that we're going to be deploying um, to go down and, and to search um, and then of course uh, to possibly um, rewrite this vessel so we can do some more preliminaries in terms of our investigations. This incident comes just over a year after 11 Haitian nationals met a similar fate in Abaco waters. Four of those victims were children. The vessel, Cozy Time, was headed to South Florida on an illegal smuggling operation when it experienced engine trouble and eventually sank, trapping 11 of the 28 people under the boat. Today, Delavo said it was too soon to tell whether this latest incident was also a smuggling operation. Each time crime statistics are released by the Royal Bahamas Police Force, offenses such as murder, armed robbery and housebreaking are featured high on those lists. However, crimes like aggravated assault are noticeably missing. In this report, our Christina McNeil put the question to Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade, who explained why you'll never see that offense alongside major crimes against the person. You may be surprised at what's considered a minor crime in the Bahamas. Littering, vagrancy, domestic disputes, and aggravated assault? Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade says aggravated assault will never be listed among major crimes like murder and armed robbery. However, he admits if you take a closer look at minor crime statistics, the results will be staggering. Aggravated assault will never be on this uh, document that I give you because these are major crime stats. And so let me just explain it to your satisfaction. So for years now, well over 30 years, whenever statistics are produced, they're major and minor crimes. This, these would be categorized as major crimes. 
So we take the major crimes, we categorize them in categorical crimes against persons and crimes against property. And so you're always comparing apples with apples. That has never changed. Assaults causing harm of the simple variety where it's, it's just I hit you, it's pain, causing harm to the extent that we, we cut a person or stab a person, the flesh is cut, there's blood, and then you get into a more serious form of harm. All of those things he categorized, and you're more than welcome to see them. You would be amazed at the amount of calls we get for assistance on a daily basis, on a weekly and on a yearly basis. Those numbers are staggering. That also means that crimes including stabbings and non-fatal shootings will not be included in major crime statistics provided by police from time to time. However, Greenslade says police quantify all reports on a daily basis from domestic disputes to loud noise reports and illegal dumping. I'll tell you those numbers are very high. And in many of those cases, um, people are not arrested. And where they're arrested in many cases, um, witnesses withdraw on a weekly and on a yearly basis. Those numbers are staggering. So the police force is very, very busy. We don't just deal with major crimes. Greenslade says around 300 arrests are made each month in reference to both major and minor crimes. For NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. Since Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade took command of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, more than 30 officers have been dismissed for failing to abide by the rules and regulations. Most recently, Greenslade says a reserve officer has been dismissed for being in possession of a firearm while off duty. When he offended, he offended as a civilian. In essence, he was not on duty at the time when he committed the offense or offenses. That adult who formerly served as a reservist was found in possession of an illegal pistol and ammunition having discharged that weapon in a public place in southwestern New Providence. Greenslade says that reservist is no longer serving in the police department in any capacity. The public offers no hesitation in saying how proud they are of our police officers but when we run afoul of the law when we breach the terms and conditions of our contract and we demonstrate that we can no longer serve the people of the Bahamas with distinction and with clean hands, there is no place for us in this organization, and that includes the Commissioner of Police. Greenslade says he will never make excuses for those officers that run afoul of the law. This as he encouraged officers to live up to the responsibility of the office they hold. Well, Prime Minister Perry Christie has admitted to having intervened in a long-standing dispute between Lyford Key billionaires Louis Bacon and Peter Nygaard by engaging an American firm to conduct an environmental assessment of the Clifton area. Questions recently arose over the Christie administration's involvement with Nygaard after a video depicting Nygaard on his estate, Nygaard Key, congratulating a group of new cabinet ministers made the rounds on social media. The Prime Minister did not say when he intervened, when the environmental assessment was conducted, the name of the American firm and what its findings were. Members of the Coalition to Protect Clifton Bay alleged that Nygaard Key has doubled in size since Nygaard purchased the land. The billionaire acquired the most western tip of Lyford Key in 1984. However, Nygaard's attorneys have argued that additional land formed as a result of the gradual and imperceptible deposit of materials from the ocean onto land. Christie called the ongoing talks and campaigns to save Clifton foolishness. The issue of the government's relationship with Nygaard has been topical this week, but Christie and his ministers have defended their dealings with Nygaard as being acceptable. Well, coming up, several Soldier Road businesses forced to close. Stay tuned to find out why. And later, the best-kept yard in New Providence.